In today's video, we'll be touring Cass's really cool Airstream base camp. What is going on YouTube? I got a really special treat for you today. I've got Cass, her dog Jasper, her cat Napoleon is in the rig waiting for us to come on the tour. Uh, Cass is gonna tell us her story today and she's gonna let us take a peek inside of her Airstream base camp. And then she's gonna answer some of the questions that you submitted earlier. So without further ado, let's talk to Cass. Hi everybody, I'm Cass. Uh, welcome to the video and thank you for checking out our story. Uh, I'm 32 years old, can't even keep track of my own age. And I've been on the road now as a nomad for about three years. I launched from Austin, Texas and I didn't have an RV. I had bought a class B and it had some issues, it was a little broken. So I had to sell it and I ended up just having my Toyota 4Runner. So we traveled the country for about eight months between Airbnbs and sleeping out of the back of the 4Runner. Um, and I was just sitting on my Airbnb bed one day waiting for the shower to clear up from everybody else in the house. And I decided it'd be nice to have my own kitchen and my own bathroom. So we ended up looking at RVs. I wanted something I could tow behind the 4Runner, which means you have to have something kind of small. So I started looking at the base camp. I looked at it actually in Idaho found a better deal on it in New Jersey with a really highly rated RV dealer. So drove out to the East Coast, picked up, and we've been living in this for two years ever since. So if you're curious what it looks like inside and how to live in one of these 16 foot RVs with a dog who's 85 pounds and a cat, come on in and I'll show you around. So before we head on inside, I'll tell you a few of the cool things about the outside of the base camp and some of its specs. One of the reasons that I love it and purchase this unit is that it has two doors. So the ventilation for having all the animals inside is really great. So it's got the side entry door, like your standard RV door. And then on the back, it has a rear hatch door that's meant to put in bikes, kayaks, things like that, because it's a mini toy hauler. I always have the bed down. So I just use the screen and the back door with the latch to keep it open and then let the fresh air come in. So even on a really hot 75, 80 degree day out here in Colorado with just the doors and the fan going, it's cool enough for us to hang out inside. So it's one of the ways we can boondock and not have to worry about air conditioning. It has 160 watts of solar on the roof and that helps us boondock and it really is enough to get by as long as the weather is good. I do have two deployable solar panels as well so we can run completely off grid. The base camp comes with a little ZAMP plug right on the front. You can just get a suitcase panel, plug it right in, and everything works. It's really easy to use. The other thing that's unique about the base camp is it has a 26 gallon freshwater tank, but then it has a combined black and gray tank. So anything from the bathroom, the shower, the sink, all of it goes into the same tank. It makes it so that the tank fills up a lot faster than when you have two separate tanks, but there's ways to get around that. You learn to conserve water, there's little tips and tricks. So we can still go about two weeks boondocking in this RV. The other cool features is it has an outdoor shower. That's how I give Jasper a bath. It's just a feed through with the shower head from the bathroom, but it's enough that I can give Jasper a bath outside and not make a huge mess in the wet bath. So this is a 2018 Airstream Base Camp. At that time, they just sold the Airstream Base Camp, but in 2019, they came out with the X version. Um, so I got a few of those upgrades added onto this. So it's a half base camp, half X, depending on what features you're looking at. So I got the solar guards put on the front windows. That helps when you're driving down these rocky roads. If a rock flies up, you're not going to crack your windows. There are usually stainless guards on the front, but I didn't want the extra weight up there. They were about 30 to 40 pounds. And that's extra tongue weight that the forerunner doesn't need to try to carry. So. The other X addition that I got added on was the three inch lift and the larger Wrangler tires. The tires that came on the regular base camp, honestly, were completely fine. They were really good, solid street tires. They're not your normal tiny RV tires. So even boondocking with the regular tires, you'll be completely fine. The three inch lift is just a nice peace of mind so that when I'm driving down a road by myself, if there's a rock or something, I know I can clear it without having somebody to look at that for me. And that's about it on the features outside. So come on inside, we'll show you around and uh, you'll get to meet Napoleon. This is Napoleon. He is my 14 year old adventure cat. I've had him since he was a kitten and he's hiked, camped and uh, traveled with us for the last three years. 
Jasper is a four-year-old German Shepherd Husky mix. He's a rescue, and I also got him as a puppy. Uh, he spent three of his four years on the road. This is also his moose. If he has his moose, he's happy. So let me give you a tour of the inside. We'll start over here on the kitchen area. The kitchen is a panoramic kitchen that takes up the whole front of the RV. You have your sink, you have your two gas burner stove, and you have panoramic front windows, which is actually one of the reasons that I bought this RV. You can't find a kitchen this size in another 16 foot or smaller RV. So it was really one of the big selling features. The other thing is when you're sitting on the bed or at the tables and you're looking out the front, those panoramic windows, it's just incredible the views that you can see. There's also a little fridge, there's enough storage. I actually store my clothes in the kitchen as well as my kitchen items on the other side as well. So there's a ton of storage and that's actually where most of my belongings are. Next to that is the wet bath. I know wet baths are a little bit weird to a lot of people where the toilet is in the shower, but you actually get used to it really quickly. The other thing to keep in mind with wet baths is to make sure that you actually fit in them. So when I was shopping around for an RV, I was looking for something that I could actually wash my hair in and really take a true shower in. This one, you have enough elbow room, it's tall enough. I actually tested it out when I was checking out the base camp. The salesman was awkwardly sitting on the benches while I was in there trying to pretend to take a shower. And it was an awkward five minutes, but I made sure that the bathroom actually worked for me. And you get comfortable with it, and after a while you don't even notice it's a wet bath anymore. In the back, we have two benches, which actually fold down into the bed as well. The bed, when it is folded down, is about a king-size bed. Those are really only the dimensions of the front and the full length. Because of the way the Airstream curves back, it is a little bit shorter than a king-size. So even as five foot seven female, I sleep at an angle. And then that leaves enough room for Jasper on one side and Napoleon on the other. Then during the day, I can take the memory foam that I have on the bed, just fold it right back. The table pops up and I can sit there and I can work. You can also eat there, play games, do however you would like on that table. The other place that I work is actually right up on the front counter. I have a standing desk that I just put up there, put the mouse right on the kitchen counter and that's where I work. And it's really comfortable standing desk. You have those panoramic views and it's really a beautiful thing. Before I filmed Cass's rig tour, I asked her if she'd be willing to answer some subscriber questions. She graciously agreed, and I asked you for questions, and you gave some great ones. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do a quick Q&A with Cass. The first question is, why did you choose the Airstream over other types of RVs like a van? So I actually owned a Class B RV for about a month. It was a 2001 Chinook Concourse, absolutely beautiful condition. It was a great RV, I loved it. But there was maintenance issues that even though I got it inspected, were hidden and came out during that month. I also learned during that month of owning it, we didn't live in it at the time, I just drove it around, was trying to move everything into it, that the cabinet shaking really scared Jasper. So I have some funny pictures of Jasper with Huge eyes, completely freaked out driving it, and I just knew that I couldn't put him through that. So that's one of the reasons I ended up going into a travel trailer, is both Napoleon and Jasper know the Forerunner is what moves. That's uncomfortable, they don't necessarily enjoy it, but when they come into the base camp, it's home, they feel comfortable, and they feel safe. The reason I ended up with the base camp itself is because I was looking at RVs that were under 5,000 pounds, but then I also had a really long wish list of things that I wanted. One of them was a really large kitchen, a really large bed, and a shower I could actually stand up in. The other thing was a place for the litter box, because you have to have a litter box, and there's a lot of small trailers that literally don't have the room to put a litter box in. So in the end, when I saw the base camp, I had a measuring tape, and it was the only one that could actually fit everything I wanted, so we ended up with it. How good of a tow vehicle is the Toyota 4Runner? So the 4Runner does a decent job at towing the base camp. Uh, it does well enough that I haven't actually wanted to upgrade it or really change it out. I've gone up these passes here in Colorado, Wolf Creek Pass. It doesn't overheat. I can downshift going down. It tows the base camp very well. With that said, it also is still an SUV with a V6 engine. So when we're going up Wolf Creek Pass, you're doing 35 miles an hour in the slow lane, hanging out with 18-wheelers while everybody's blowing past you. 
I also don't like putting the engine really in the high RPMs. So I usually say about two and a half, three RPMs when we're going up the passes. So are you gonna be flying around the Colorado passes, towing the base camp with the Forerunner? Probably not, but it does a really good job towing it, especially once we go boondocking and then there's dirt roads, you gotta climb over rocks, different things like that. The Forerunner does really well. There's only been twice that I've had to put it in four wheel drive, and that was to get up a steep, really rocky hill. So the rocks are sliding underneath the tires. And I just put it in four wheel drive for safety. I don't know if I actually really needed it, but I wanted to do it just in case. How do you pay for your travel lifestyle? I'm a process consultant. I work for a large insurance carrier. And basically what I do is try to make other people's jobs easier and more efficient. So I look at internal processes, try to figure out if there's a way to use computers or automation to try to make somebody's life easier, or even just look at older processes that have been around for a while that might be inefficient and see if there's a way to make them better. Isn't the aluminum siding hot in the summer and cold in the winter? Yes, the interior panels on the base camp are aluminum. So you can feel the heat, you can feel the cold. Uh, if it's a really cold day and lean up against the base camp, you will let out a little sound. Um, the other thing is the way that you see the bed against the aluminum walls, dog claws scratch it very easily. So this lovely tape on one side and then it's a padding on the other side helps protect that aluminum. So that is one slight downfall to having the aluminum on the inside. How do you keep your RV clean with two pets? The dirt from the pets, you kind of get used to it. I have a little broom that I clean the floor and wipe it down about once a day. I have a little vacuum for the rug in here and I vacuum about once a day as well. There's the litter that you also have to deal with. And when he goes to the bathroom, he usually comes flying out of the litter box and the litter goes everywhere. So I usually end up sweeping up right after him. So it's a constant battle. You're constantly cleaning it up. But the thing is I can deep clean the whole entire base camp in under three minutes. So it doesn't really take that long to keep up with them. What are some of the advantages and disadvantages of a small RV? So the advantages of living in a shorter Airstream are it's very easy to turn this thing around. So I've done this a few times. You can do a U-turn on a regular two lane highway. Um, so it's when you have the four lanes together. You can also turn around when you're looking to go boondocking and you're in a really tight spot. So for example, I was up in the Grand Tetons, started going up Shadow Mountain and it was too busy, couldn't get around. Um, so I was able to back into this tiny little area right off the road, turn around and come back out. That would be almost impossible in a 30 foot Airstream. The disadvantages are that you have less room on the inside. My bed is also my dining area, it's also my living area, and you have to put the bed up and down. Most of the time I just leave the bed down and you end up doing everything in bed. What is your favorite place you visited so far? So I have a few favorite places. Um, last year we went to Banff and Jasper up in Canada and it is absolutely beautiful up there. There's so much to see and do. The other place I really love is, I'm probably gonna pronounce it wrong, but Ure, Colorado, it's out near Telluride. They are the most beautiful and spectacular mountains that you can see in Colorado, I think. And it's just a gorgeous area. If you go there in the fall, you can see the aspens when they all turn golden and it is absolutely spectacular. What is your favorite meal to prepare in your RV? So my favorite meal is kind of a base. It would be fried rice. Um, and then you can put all your vegetables and seasoning right in that fried rice and make a big batch of it. You put it in your fridge and then throughout the week you just cook up different proteins between eggs and chicken and steak, mix it in with that fried rice, and you can take that one meal and make it last a really long time and also not get bored of it. If you could change one thing about your rig, what would that be? So if I could change one thing about my rig, and if I could dream big, what I would really love to do is put a recirculating shower in. Since I only have a black and gray tank combined, taking showers really fills that up very quickly. So if I could put in a system where the water from the shower just recirculates and filters with an endless hot water heater, then you could take real long showers out boondocking and it would really be great. What have you learned about yourself living as a nomad? So 
so traveling and being a nomad actually teaches you a lot and it really can change you in good ways. Um, I think the biggest thing is you learn to rely on yourself and you become even more independent. So even if you are an independent person to start, you run into situations where you have to diagnose or react without anybody else there and you really need to learn to rely on yourself. So you learn what your limits are, you learn what you can handle, you learn what you like and what you don't like, and you really kind of understand yourself a little bit better. Do you have any advice for solo female travelers? So if you're a solo female and you wanna get into the traveling lifestyle, don't hesitate, um, go ahead and do it. it. Safety is something that you need to be aware of and you need to keep on the back of your mind. So trust your gut. If you're in a situation or if you're in a location, it just doesn't feel right, leave. Um, keep an eye out, you know, don't go blindly into something. Always make sure you're watching out for yourself. But honestly, in three years of travel, I've never had anything that was really scary and that made me really nervous. Um, when I go in here at night, everything's locked up. I have Jasper, I have a can of bear spray. I feel completely safe. I can boondock by myself. I can sit in a Walmart parking lot and feel completely fine. There's also really good communities out there. So depending on what you're interested in, whether it's RVing and you wanna join something like Escapers, which is where I met most of my community, or if you want to find hobby groups, or if there's groups for your specific RV type, find a group, get a community, and it's really great to have them to rely on. Even if you don't travel with them all the time, if you're out there, you're feeling lonely, you're not quite sure if you wanna continue, you'll have people who understand what you're going through and they can really help you along. So give it a try and then always have a backup plan. If you don't like it, you can always change. Thank you, Cass, for letting us tour your really cool Airstream here and introducing us to Jasper and Napoleon. It's been awesome. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And even if you didn't like me and you didn't like Cass, but you like Jasper, you can still give it a thumbs up. So thanks for watching. Oh, I wanna stay right here, right here, chilling with my friends for another year.